sweet embrace Caught in its web of constant give and take people that like the complicated video. If you've been following my channel, you know I've covered a lot of load boxes, attenuators, and boxes that help you make your amp go quiet in the night, but then as loud as it possibly can, but without killing the neighbors, and helping you record it in the best way possible at the perfect setting of the amp into your computer, or to present it to your audience live without killing them. You know, 100 watt plexi sounds great, but in a small club, not possible. That's why Fryette has the, what's that thing called? Power station with a 50 watt or the 100 watt, which is two power amp loaded. That's why Boss has the Waza tube amp expander, which is class AB something, but always the system, the, set, the signal is digital but then gets amplified, but also has effects, but also has IRs. But then Two Notes has the Torpedo Live, the Captor X, which is right there, and the Studio. Whereas the Live and the Studio don't attenuate, the Captor X attenuates a little bit, but they have dynamic IRs, whereas the Reload attenuates, but doesn't have any IR at all. And then there's the AUX, which doesn't even use IRs, but some other form of simulation, but doesn't even have XLR out. And it attenuates, but how good is that? And then there's the Red 7 Amp Central, which very much puts an emphasis on reactive load and it's got a great reactive load. It really reacts like a big 412, which isn't really tunable, but it's got a great sound. But then again, also doesn't attenuate, but has a stereo output, XLR, and puts stereo effects on the XLR output. Every single box is different. Not a single one can do everything yet. I assume when one of those boxes comes out that does everything, the attenuation and the making your small amp louder with tubes, but then also IRs and software and Bluetooth and everything. I'm hoping that that box comes out. Yet, I know it will be 2000 3000 bucks because hitting all these things, is it's going to be expensive. Now, you have to find out which of these boxes on the market is right for you. I haven't mentioned the uh, sewer something load because I, I've never had one. And then Mesa also has some that are pretty much a Captor X, just not as good for more money. So I haven't had one here just from what I can tell because it doesn't actually have the two notes software, even though it's using the two notes chip, which is kind of insane. But here's one that actually hits a lot, like a lot of the features that you want minus complex software with Bluetooth minus attenuation. 
because Fayette, with the power station, covers that aspect really well. The power station, which I have right there, it's my power station 100, which is freaking brilliant if you actually want your amp to go into an actual cab and the cab's supposed to sound the way the cab sounds and the amp's supposed to the way the amp sounds because they're all communicating with tubes. But then you have a knob in the middle that can make it loud and soft. It can do lots more. Please watch my videos and my amazing video with Stephen Frayette from, uh, hmm, what's the company? Frayette. Now we're looking at the power load IR. So I'm gonna go through the features. Bear with me, grab a coffee because it's a lot of them. I've got it right here on the table. It is really nice and compact. It has high feet, so you can put it on your amp, even if your amp has a leather handle, which is smart thinking, Mr. Freyette, because that's probably where it's going to sit. USB on the front, which is cool because you will access that quickly and then uh, take it out. Should we talk about this right away? What you actually do is, or well, you take a USB cable, and in order for your computer to see it as a drive, you have to disconnect the power. So I'm doing this now. And now you can see there's a simple folder called No Name. And in it are four folders, each of them containing four folders, which is literally the banks and then the presets. And you just drop your wave of the IR you want in there. And uh, that's pretty much it. That's how easy that is. There's no hidden software. There's no editor. There's no anything. You just drop an IR in there. And that's pretty much what it is. Right now, it's, of course, loaded with 16 Frayette cabs. So that, that, that's how that works. So connect the power again, and you're ready to go. That's, that's all the computer side of it. So let's look at the front. This is the reactive load, okay? Because it's a tunable reactive load, which means flat is uh, exactly what you think it is. It's flat. And then you can very quickly, if you, if you like what you're hearing, but you want a little bit more low end, can go warm, you want more low end, you go deep. So you, you like the IR that you selected with this selectee right there, but you want to tune it. Well, then you go and do that. And this is all nice, but you want more brightness. And in, instead of loading an IR that has that, you just go and actually tune how the power load is responding to your amp, because that's exactly what the reactive load is. So your amp is seeing a brighter cab. So this is abs absolutely super helpful to quickly get the sound you want. When I recorded the track in the beginning, I did exactly that. I was like, ah, I like it, but I, mean, I need more bite. Bam. You know, get that up to edge or bite. Bright, not bite. Should be bite. Okay. This is the level of your IR out. And this is where you select your IR. So it's a little bit confusing. Why are there two lights on while these are flickering? Well, what's flickering right now are the ones that you have selected. Whereas the ones that are steady on is a preset. So by clicking, you switch between presets. So right now I'm on bank one, one, and then you go up. Right now you're hearing, well, you, you would be hearing bank one, number three, but I can click and recall the two presets that I selected, which is very convenient because let's say that's my rhythm, that's my lead. I can always quickly just jump back and forth between them by just clicking here. Okay, so when you're on this preset, and you select something and you're holding it in, you're selecting the other preset. So I need to be on this preset to select the other one. If I want to change this, I'm on the other one. I change it to one, one, hold it in. And now I can switch between these two, which is a really nice feature instead of always dialing back and forth and back and forth. And that's really all there is. You go through the 16 presets. And of course, if you're right now, I'm on three, Two, it's not flickering, but it's relatively easy to figure out. So we're going to go to 1-1. One, one. And that's it for the IR. That's all you can do. Level and pick the preset that you select. 
But what's all this down here? Well, in addition to an IR out, it also has an analog cap simulation because Stephen Foyette insists on that analog cap simulations are still valid and have a point. I wouldn't only want to record with this, but having this as a backup uh, in my recording could be cool. And that's exactly what you can do with the power load IR. So this is then the level, and we're going to listen to it, of course. You can change the phase by 180 degrees. You can, this will engage the whole EQ section. Low mid, high mid, change the top band and emphasize it right here. So now let's look at the back because it gets a lot more complicated. Yep. There's a 12 volt DC. The just DI out this, which is not frequency compensated in any way. You can actually run without 12 volt. So we have an impedance selector right here. I'm on eight. You go in and you go through to your cab. It's not attenuated. Your cab will be as loud as it usually is. There's a ground lift if you got any hum issues. There's a headphone out. And on the headphone out, you can actually get a program input. So if you plug in your phone or whatever, this is an aux level, an aux input, so you can jam along with stuff on the headphone out. So for you living room guitar players, this is a great idea. And this effects loop, which I have wired up mono right now, actually goes only to the headphone out. So this whole delay I've got on top is really only to visualize because it is completely pointless because we're not testing this. So right here is a send and return for an effect. And that is fully stereo if you wanted it. And that goes to the headphone out and you can just have fun with it. Great for practice and for having these really cool stereo things. Then, by the way, this is a Zeola silver cable. It's like one of the best cables you can freaking get. So thank you, Zeola. This is the IR out. As it says clearly, IR out. You can also run it unbalanced. If your audio interface is literally, you know, 30 centimeters from this box, then just go unbalanced. I don't think you're going to lose a lot of level. We are, of course, running XLR, which is professional. There's the line input. You can run preamps into it or just pedals. I recommend having some kind of preamp, obviously, and maybe even some kind of power amp because this will simulate with the IR a cab and a mic, not any kind of amplifier. So running straight in with your pedal is like running your pedal directly into your cab. We're going to try it, but I mean, I don't expect it to be very good. So you can run this line or amp level. Okay, so if you have a preamp, you can run it in there. Then... Or for example, you could run your, I don't know, your, which would be stupid, a Helix line out and then use the IR in here. But I mean, Helix has an IR loader, so why do it? Then which we'll test analog out down here is actually the analog cap simulation that you set up in the front. Also with a mic and an unbalanced line. And then we have a more complex section down here which is a full range passive output. That is a DI from your amp. Amp goes in there and out comes something that's completely unaffected. And you can later on uh, give this to your engineer, your mixing engineer, or you yourself put some kind of IR in it in the DAW. You've got a level unbalanced out and the phase again in case there's any issues. And of course, a professional mic output. So you could at the same time record an IR record an analog speaker simulation and record a DI out to later change everything that you did. So you could record every single guitar on three mono tracks and have all the options later on. This is a feature loaded freaking box. And that means now we're going to go into testing. Let's start with some cleans from the Tone King Sky King with this heritage guitar. On bank. One one. You can look in the manual what that is. It's some it's some kind of Friday thing, of course. They are very 
Direct and dry IRs, you can load whatever IR you want. I prefer a little bit more room. Uh, I love in the aux how you can tweak that room and how it really sounds like a cab in the room. But it's of course fully dependent on your IR. So what you're hearing doesn't necessarily mean that's what you're getting. You're getting whatever you put in there, obviously. You know, it's just a vehicle to your IR. But if I want a little bit more depth, I just kick in some spring reverb. And then we just go to the next one and it immediately, it, it immediately. And so on and so on. With cleans, you don't hear it that much. Once we get all those higher frequencies of the distortion, where the differences of the caps really come through. So let's go there. And we're going to go into the Synergy Sin 50 with the Freyette Deliverance module, because why not just stay with Freyette? And that's a freaking good module, which is right now on a mid-gain thing. So we're going to go, how do we go back? Oh, I just clicked it. And bam, we're back to 1-1. One, one. By the way, I think the analog speaker simulator would be great for cleans to maybe get a little bit more of that 80s direct into the board kind of a feel something that Corey Wong is doing nowadays for those really direct funky sounds and here's the deliverance module <laughs> So let's look at the tunable Reactive load, that's at flat right now. It's not subtle, it's very clear how it gets a lot thicker. And so it's very nice to quickly tune your IR. But it's not tuning the IR, it's actually how the amp is seeing the power load. Let's stay in the middle here. Uh, let's go through all the IRs without me saying anything, just playing them. How about that?
and that was all of them. Let's quickly do something a little bit heavier. We're on the Rev Generator 120. And that's how quickly you get back to the first preset because I just clicked preset. So there's a lot of variation within those supplied caps to get you started. And whatever you want, you just freaking get from your favorite IR supplier and you just put in there. I mean, that's how easy that is. They're not saying you have to use the Fryette caps. And you can see with those tuny thingies, just those two switches with three stay, stay tie, stay two scissors. You can quickly just get a little bit more bite, a little bit more heft. So let's go. Let's go to the analog sim out, which, you know, is technically dated. But why not have it in there? And why not just track with it in parallel? So let's check out what that sounds like. So when you don't have it in, it is literally just the DI sound, and we all know that sounds horrible. So you go and click it in in the middle, and now it's active. So what's one of the benefits? Well, I personally don't notice but there are guitar players who will tell you immediately, like Thomas Bluck, for example, oh, there's latency, oh, there's latency. Because they're so used to the immediate feedback from a tube amp into a cab into the room that they do notice the latency. I play 99.9% .9 with an IR loader. I play with the AUX or something similar. So for me, I don't notice it, okay? And that's three milliseconds, five milliseconds, but some people do notice and they don't want to play with it. So you might want to actually record with the analog cap sim, which has no latency. If you are susceptible to that kind of super minute latency, then that can be your saving grace. But yet you can still record with the IR, which sounds better depending on what you're looking for. Let's go quickly to the clean sound. Clean, you might even turn it off. If that's what you're looking for. And again, the whole thing is tunable 
with the reactive load side. So you want more brightness, give it more brightness. Flip the phase, which you won't hear right now. But then a recording you might, depending on how you recorded your guitars. And of course, if it's in phase or out of phase with the IR, that could be actually a, a big thing. So let's do this with some drive sound. Extremely effective low mids right there. So, depending on what you're trying to achieve, this can be a good alternative, most certainly for tracking if latency is an issue. Now, there's the third output, of course. There's a third part, which is, uh, has nothing on it. Okay, that also is a higher output. And that sounds just horrible, right? Yeah, you don't want to do that, except maybe on the clean. If you really want that Cory Wong sound, why not? Why not have that? But the point, of course, is to record and then later treat it what ever you want to treat it with. Put some kind of IR loader on there and do it after the fact. So always recording that alongside what you're doing with the IR and the uh, frequency compensated out is not a bad idea. It's three tracks, but you're on the safe side to always have something to work with. You could, of course, monitor headphone out with effects if you wanted to, but you could also monitor with your recording system. But to actually practice with your 100 watt amp at home and have effects on there in stereo, which your amp probably doesn't allow you to do, could be really, really, really cool. Now, lastly, let's try to just put a pedal in it, which again, makes no sense because what I'm gonna do is a an overdrive pedal. It's not a preamp pedal. So we're completely, forgoing the idea of an amplifier, we're just going pedal board or drives 
no amp into the cab. But why not? You get the idea what it can do. And we're going to do this with the eye out. So here I am taking the Jackson Audio Golden Boy, which you can see right there in the background, through these pedals, a little bit of reverb there, tuner, and then into the line input right there. Uh, level, let's see. That's actually way better than I hoped. Wow. I, I assume the reactive load can't do anything because why would that be effect? But let's see. No, obviously not because it's got nothing to do with the reactive load. This is not shabby at all, and you could full on just record your freaking drive with some effects in there. Use that IR, go XLR into your DAW, done. Uh, uh, it, it, it works. I mean, for a lead sound right there, I would have recorded that and have zero problem accepting that in a mix. Let's talk price for this little box of quality because it's on the freaking table and I, I've, I've handled it. This is a good box, by the way, it comes with the 12 volt power supply, 500 milliamps are necessary, but that comes in the box. Uh, talk about quality and all that stuff, blah, blah, blah. I am getting paid to make this video. If you get the product and it's shit, well, you know I lied, which won't happen because I, A, I'm not lying, I'm not exaggerating, I'm not saying anything I don't fully support. That's how this stuff works. The Power Loader R is the other kind of product that Fryette offers, which is the opposite kind of a little bit of what the Power Station does. The Power Station doesn't really deal with a lot of direct output. It gives you a, a DI signal and then you can do whatever you want with it, but it's there to actually bring your amp effectively into a cab and make it exactly the volume that you want it in the best way possible, with effects even after your power amp, which is awesome. Now this is the opposite in the sense that it is not an attenuator. It just eats up all the power from your amp or gives it directly to the cab as loud as your amp is. So no attenuation, but it gives you a plethora, that's a word, of options when it comes to output. Unprocessed DI, analog amp simulation, tunable on the front panel, I are loading up to 16 IRs with two presets selectable. Tunable reactive load, which is very important. I can't stress enough how I was like, ah, oh, I don't know about this IR. Okay, let's base more travel. Bam, and then you were there. So you really quickly got to the point, which is very important. I mean, I recorded a whole song with it with different sounds, and I very quickly got to the point, which is what you want when you're creating music. You don't want to fiddle with you know, menus and going into apps and all that stuff. You want to have your basic layout of cabs that you like and then be able to quickly tune them and also be able to quickly get to them when you're recording. So this, this clicky two preset system is very helpful. If you want to practice at home, killer. Now, again, let's get to the price point. On the website, it says $6.99 in the US. 
which I think is absolutely competitive co looking at the competition of Two Notes, Sur, Mesa, uh, Red 7. Each of them have their own pros and cons when it comes to layout and ins and outs and features. This has a lot to offer. This has a lot that you're probably looking for. Let me check the price in Germany. In Germany, it's clocking in at $7.99. I mean, that's a higher range than some other products. For example, the Captor X. However, and that is attenuating, but it's literally off, super quiet, and then already too loud. And then nothing. Okay. It's got Bluetooth, and it's got the app and all that stuff. I get that. It also has the processed and unprocessed outs if you choose to, to have that. This, however, when you do the analog cap simulation, no latency whatsoever. And the effects loop and the headphone out where, you, I mean, it's again, it's a different kind of box that has features that the others don't. So you just have to make up your mind. What do you need? Then look at the boxes on the market and decide which one you want. Is this one right for you? Is the Power Loader R from Fayette the thing that you need? That depends on your needs. I can tell you that, okay? When you ask me which one's good for, for me, I don't know how you're working. You have to figure this out. I presented you with the options. I just know that it's well built, good people that know their shit. I love the form factor. I love the quality. I love the thought that went into it with all the ins and outs. It's very likely that this thing will be the solution that you're looking for. I put links below. Thanks to Fariet for commissioning the video. Steven, you're awesome. And Jürgen from the German distributor, you're awesome too. Please use my links. That really helps me. Thanks to Leslie for switching this very complicated video. And we're going to say animals at the end. And you won't surrender to the blind leading the blind.